if anyone chooses to argue that the Khilafah can be restored before the advent of Imam al-Mahdi, I have no quarrel with him. No. If he wants to launch a movement to restore the Khilafah now, I don't have any quarrel with him and you should not have any quarrel with him. We have come to this conclusion because we understand that Ya'juj and Ma'juj were released in the lifetime of the Prophet And we therefore recognize the world order which today controls the world to be the world order of Ya'juj and Ma'juj. You do not, but we do. All three books describe the plan for an apocalypse or third world war which will give birth to one world empire and one world leader. This one world leader is called the Antichrist. And now history repeats itself. The prophecy is being fulfilled. World War III would be ignited by fueling aggression between the Zionists of Israel and the Arab world, who would eventually destroy one another. Social, political, and economic chaos would then force the masses to accept one world army and one world government ruled by the Illuminati. World War III is to be fomented by using the so-called controversies, the agents of the Illuminati, operating under whatever new name, are now stirring up between the political Zionists and the leaders of the Muslim world. That war is to be directed in such a manner that all of Islam and political Zionism, Israel, will destroy each other, while at the same time, the remaining nations, once more divided on this issue, will be forced to fight themselves into a state of complete exhaustion after World War III is ended. Indoctrination into accepting the idea that only a one-world government can put an end to recurring wars and strife. If you disagree with me, you say, we never heard this before. Our sheikhs who taught us Islam, they never talked about this, so you must be wrong. My response is, wait and see. That's all. I don't have to say anything more than that. The Holy Prophet ﷺ mentioned by way of prophecy that uh, one thing, that in th that age, the real faith will not be found among the Muslims. He mentioned that uh, their scholars will not be really leading the people to guidance. Their places of worship will be very well attended, but without any guidance. It indicates that the scholars at that time, they will be similarly, similarly uh, you know, their character will be simply a character of mockery. They would not be representing the right faith.
in World War II, Israel was to be born. And the Zionists were given power. So since the first two wars came off, just exactly as that letter said, and that letter used to hang right in the British Museum Library until 1977 when Baron Rothschild became a director. And as soon as he was on the board of directors, that letter disappeared from the library. Immediately. But since that letter so clearly delineated the first two world wars, I think we have to look at it seriously and take it to heart when it says in there so clearly that the third world war will be fomented between the Zionists and Islam. Does anybody see that materializing today? Every place we look, we can see it happening. And we can see that the power they have here in this country to run things and to, to prepare the world for a new world order. If we recognize this world order to be the world order of Jews and Manchus, then so long as they control the world, you cannot restore the Khilafah. They will destroy it. If tomorrow peace broke out in between Israelis and Palestinians, does anybody think there wouldn't be a full-blown war in Iraq? You know, I used to say early on when I was a kid, I'd say, when I was a young senator, I'd say, if I were a Jew, I'd be a Zionist. I am a Zionist. You don't have to be a Jew to be a Zionist. Here in Washington, D.C., beneath a statue of Albert Pike, author William T. Still explains the contents of this remarkable letter. Uh, uh, this was a letter that was written by the head of European masonry, a man by the name of Mazzini, who wrote, wrote it to Albert Pike about 1871. Uh, it was in the British Museum for a number of years on display, so we know it existed. It's now disappeared, incidentally. The subject of the letter was to try to figure out a way to finally get humankind uh, to give up the cherished concept of nationalism and finally give in to the New World Order internationalist construct. Uh, the letter called for a series of three world wars. The third world war would be between the Jews and the Muslims and would bring about the Battle of Armageddon and would finally make mankind so sick of warfare that they'd give up their cherished concept of nationalism and give in to their new, the New World Order concept. We can usher in a new era of enhanced prosperity and peace. America must play its role in ushering in a new era of peace. I'm giving you a wake-up call. A wake-up call that you're living in the age of the countdown. So don't be fighting each other over chicken feed. That's what you're doing. In South Africa in particular, the ulama fighting with each other. Sectarian conflicts over chicken feed. While this hugely important subject is so far away from them, it is unbelievable.